Hey guys, Richard Older here. Thanks for watching the video and thanks for supporting the channel. Before we get going, make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. Just get it over with. Today we're looking at a 4.8 liter LS. Should we go with displacement, like a 383 stroker, or the replacement? You know what I'm talking about. Boost. Hey guys, before we get going on this video, make sure to join me live nightly, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. If you've got questions about any aspect, performance, cylinder heads, camshafts, any motor, doesn't have to be an LS, doesn't have to be a small block Chevy, can be a big block, can be a Honda. I've tested it all. If you've got a question, chances are I have an answer or somebody else on the live feed also might have an answer. If you've got a question, remember, join us live, 7 p.m. live on YouTube. Let's get to our video. In this video, we're going to take a look at performance modifications to the 4.8 liter LS motor, or more accurately, the LR4. Maybe you already have one in your truck. Maybe you're going to get one from the wrecking yard. Regardless, how do we make more power? So I'm going to show you what happens when we run a stock 4.8 liter LR4. Then what happens when we upgrade it with heads, cam, and intake. Then what happens when we go whole hog and step up in displacement all the way up to 383 cubic inches. You know, making a stroker but i'm also going to show you two versions of that then we're going to jump over and show you what happens when we do cam springs and boost on the 4.8 To compare going with a stroker version of a 4.8 or a 5.3 and doing an upgrade or doing turbo version, we need to take a look first, obviously, at a stock one to find out what our starting point is and then how much better each one of these other versions are. So this is basically a bone stock 4.8 liter uh, LR4 from the wrecking yard. This one was a Gen 3. All we did was run it with a manual throttle body, the stock truck intake and stock 706 heads and and rockers, stock camshaft, all of that stuff. The only thing we put on it was a set of long tube headers. They were inch and three quarter. We ran it with a Holly HP management system and optimized the air fuel and timing to try to maximize the power output. No accessories, no air inlet, and, and the exhaust after the, um, there were no cats and all that stuff after the headers. Run in this manner our stock LR4. Produce 333 horsepower and 343 foot-pounds of torque. You can kind of see the curve here. But let's take a look first and see what would happen if you just did, like, what if you did a heads cam and intake upgrade this on? What if you put either ported, uh, you know, professionally ported 706 heads on there, or in this case, we put a set of TrickFlow 205 heads are on there, very good heads for this small bore motor, and a good camshaft. In this case, we put a Crane uh, 224, 232 camshaft in at 590 lift and I think it was 113 or 114 degree load separation angle and then we also ran a fast LSXRT intake manifold and all this is an awful lot for a 4.8 and you could put an even bigger camshaft in and I think we could get to somewhere near 500 horsepower if we did it that way but here is our modified version and you can see the gains that we got from putting more camshaft in it ported head and even the fast intake all of that stuff basically added power out at the top end kind of past 4500 if you will but the combination did well it made 476 horsepower peak torque was 392 foot pounds so we it did very well and you can see it's making peak torque uh, a lot later in the rpm range before we were making peak torque at uh, 46 or 4700 and it shifted it all the way out to 5900 peak power came at 7100 it looked like we might have been getting a little bit of valve float there at the end, so I think uh, even more spring rate probably would be beneficial. But now let's take a look and see what happened. Um, this is just a modified version of heads cam and intake on a 4.8, but here's what happened when you bore and stroke the block and the crankshaft to 383 cubic inches. So what you do is you take the 4.853 block, we bored it to 3.905 inch bore from 3.780, we also put a 4-inch stroke crank in it. We put 6 125 rods and 4-inch pistons in it. Take a look and see here. Uh, Wysco pistons, K1 rods. This had a Speedmaster crank. This one also had very good heads on it, TrickFlow 225s. It had the, uh, a crane hydraulic roller in it, 232, 242 at 50. 
112 degree lobe separation angle, 624 lift. I had an ATI dampener on it, replaced a stock one, inch and seven eighths headers. It had the fast LX, LSXR and 102 millimeter throttle body. So it was a good combination. This one had a dish piston in it, a 10cc dish piston. And the, the 383 edges, you can see, more power everywhere. And that's the nice thing about having an extra 90 cubic inches of displacement is not only does it make more power, but because, you know, it, it makes more power, obviously, than the stock one by a lot, makes more power even than our modified version because it just has more of everything. So with that 383, and that's kind of typical of a lot of the 383s that I built, 548 horsepower and 503 foot-pounds of torque. I have put together a 1383 that made quite a bit more than this. It made a little over 600. This was 603. Torque was up also to a peak of 543 foot-pounds. Now what we did was this 383 had, um, it was an all, it was an aluminum motor. It had a flat top piston, so it had more compression. Um, we threw everything at it. It had a bigger camshaft in it. The camshaft was a 239, 248, 617, 624 out of 113. It was also, um, it had different heads on it. These were, um, Total engine airflow, LS6, CNC port heads, a stage two or stage two and a half. It, we also put 172 roller rockers on it. Inch and, they, we had inch and seven eighths headers on it. Um, we, we kind of threw everything at this combination that we had, you know, bigger camshaft, more compression were, were kind of the big things. And the combination worked out very well. As I said, 600 horsepower. 540 foot-pounds of torque. So that's a really good um, 383. That's 1.566 horsepower per cubic inch and 1.41 horsepower or foot-pounds per cubic inch. So it's pretty healthy and you can see it does pretty well. And that would be, you know, there are guys that can make a little bit more than that, but this is what you could expect from a really good 383 build. Now let's take a look and see what happens when we take a 4.8 and simply add boost. Now that we've taken a look at what you can expect going to modifications on your 4.8, you could also do this with a 5.3, or the stroker version going up to a 3.83 with good heads and cam and intake manifold. Let's find out how easy it is to make power with boost. So we have our 4.8 liter making 333 horsepower and 343 foot-pounds. Here is our test motor for the turbo application. And the, the difference that, that we see here between these two, most of it is camshaft. We ran a JFR camshaft in this thing because this was part of our sloppy stage two versus the world it was a 595 lift 224 228 degree duration 112 degree lobe separation angle probably don't need a camshaft that's this big for this kind of application but it did well we also had snake eater performance 100 100 or 1500 cc injectors the this na combination was run on 91 pump gas this one had inch and seven eighths headers and in full disclosure this one also had forged pistons because we had hurt the 4.8 before. We had the small dome JE forged pistons in this combination. And so equipped, this thing made 402 horsepower and 369 foot-pounds. This is something that you would expect from a cam upgrade on, on your 4.8, although this one had a little bit more compression, a little bit better header. It was tested on a different day. so But easily 400 horsepower with a 4.8 on a cam is not a problem. Here's what happened when we started adding boost. So you can see right off the bat, we're at 593 horsepower. This is at about 6.6 six and a half pounds. We ran a, you can run a max speeding GT45 turbo or the DNA version or CX Racing. There are a lot of different versions of this kind of similar turbo. We ran uh, the Procharger air to water intercooler with Dyna water. We also ran this on E85. We had our TC1 boost controller on this thing. So we had a nice flat boost curve. But again, 593 horsepower, 557 foot-pounds. But we did what everybody does um, when you have a turbo like this, especially since we're running very little boost. 
we turn the boost up and then we turn the boost up some more and then we turn the boost up some more and essentially with this turbo the max speeding or dna or any of these gt45 turbos we've gone up to near 800 horsepower with that turbo and that's pushing it fairly hard it's nice on the smaller motor that you don't get nearly as much back pressure on that particular turbo because that tends to be what limits these things but also the compressor side it's about a 750 to maybe 800 horsepower turbo on the right combination on a smaller motor this was run at about 12 and a half to 13 pounds and it was near 700 horsepower 691 or two horsepower 653 foot pounds but it just goes to show you we could go up more with more boost obviously that's the nice thing about having a turbo combination if you want more power you just raise the boost you can do that with a manual controller or this electronic controller without any problem at all you could also if you wanted to put an even bigger turbo on here if you want to go to a, like a summit s475 or a vs racing 78 75 that's going to take you into the thousand horsepower potential range and on this 48 with a cam and and you know ls9 head gaskets and arp studs and and a small camshaft and springs and e85 and a good intercooler you can certainly go to four digit power levels as we've seen with the big bang stuff even on the Gen 3 bottom end, certainly on the Gen 4 would be a step up in, in potential performance. But you can make lots of power, obviously, with a turbo. And with this style turbo, this GT45 style turbo, it's fairly inexpensive. You could put an air-to-air -air intercooler on. Again, all of that stuff is fairly inexpensive. But now let's see, let's, let's do a comparison between our <laughs> junkyard, essentially, 4.8 with the turbo. And we'll compare that to going the same route with the stroker. Okay, so now we can obviously quickly compare uh, the results of our dyno test on the Turbo 4.8 versus the Stroker 4.8. So should you go with a built and bigger displacement 4.8 or should you just go with boost on 4.8? And obviously maybe combine those two would be the ideal thing. But I actually don't even recommend that because you can make so much power with just the boost on a you know reasonably priced and and mildly modified 4.8 then i don't even think that you need to do it but here is our this is our stock one here is our cammed 4.8 and here is our turbo stuff this is the lower boost level and the interesting thing is look how the um you know this is 6.3 pounds look how this compares to uh, our first stroker motor, this is our 550 horsepower version, and look how it compares to even the very best stroker that I did. You can see that the 4.8, a cammed 4.8 with only six and a half pounds of boost, basically <laughs> mimics the curve of our 600 horsepower th uh, 383 with heads, cam, and intake, and all that. And all it took is really any kind of camshaft there's nothing special about this cam it worked there are a lot of other cams that you could do um but it basically did what this full dedicated 600 horsepower 383 build did so the choice is yours you can go with you know build up a naturally aspirated 383 it works really well or the four four uh, four point eight with boost does exactly that too and then obviously we see that was only at six and a half pounds so if we start going up in boost, we see kind of predictable stuff here. You know, we just start making more and more power. And that's really the benefit of going with the turbo is that once you get to a point where you start at, like in this case, six and a half pounds, and we're making nearly 600 horsepower, if you want to make 650 or 700 or 750 or whatever your number is and whatever your turbo will support, you can obviously get to that. And the thing that I like about this this little GT45, like you can get them from Max Speeding or DNA or the, all of these guys. If you put that kind of turbo on there on a 4.8, it's pretty responsive with a decent camshaft in it. You can see we're making good boost even down at 3,000 or 3,100 where our load in was. It's, it's doing well. And you can just keep adding more and more power until you get to the limit of the turbo. Now on the 600 horsepower 383, I would have to add nitrous <laughs> or boost to get that thing to make much more power. You know, I could do things like putting a different intake manifold on there and running at a higher RPM and all that stuff, but it gets more, it gets more and more difficult. The more effective and more powerful we make the NA motor, it starts getting harder and harder and more and more expensive 
to get more and more power out of the NA motor, but with a turbo deal, just turn up the boost. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay guys, what's the takeaway in our comparison between displacement and the replacement for that displacement? Boost, is boost actually a replacement for the displacement? And I'd have to answer, yes, it definitely is. As we saw, all we had to do is add about six and a half pounds to our CAN 4.8 liter, and it made about as much power as our dedicated stroker motor. But is that the whole story? Absolutely not, because if we take a 4.8 and we put a 750 horsepower turbo on it, like we did, we certainly can make 750 horsepower. But the thing is, if we put a 1,000 horsepower turbo on it, the thing that happens is our 4.8, especially a canned one, becomes less responsive with the bigger turbo. That's where more displacement will definitely help. If we took our 4.8 and made it a 5.3, it's all of a sudden began to become a lot more responsive with that bigger turbo. Now, it's not going to make any more power because the turbo ultimately dictates that. If we have the 1,000 horsepower turbo, even on a CAM 5.3, it's going to make 1,000 horsepower. It's just going to have a lot more average power because of the boost response from the extra displacement. Now, does that eliminate the need ever for a 383 stroker? No, it actually doesn't. If we take a 383 stroker and we have a 1,000 horsepower turbo, it's still going to make a 1,000 horsepower, but it's going to be a lot more responsive. But where I recommend stroker motors is on NA applications. If you're going to build a dedicated NA motor, there's no reason to stay with a 4.8 liter. As we saw, all we did was make a lot more power on the big end. If we start with a 5.3, the power output's going to be up everywhere compared to the 4.8, and the same thing with a 3.83. Now, this is especially the case if you're going to change the rods and pistons, and you're going to put forwards and internals in your 4.8 or your 5.3. You might as well put a crank in it, because bigger is better. I'm Richard Holder. Make sure to like, share, subscribe. As always, more testing coming up.